Today we celebrate the optional memorial of St. Paul of the Cross, priest. St. Paul of the Cross was born at Ovada in Vigoria in 1694. As a young man, he helped his father, who was a merchant. However, aspiring to a life of perfection, he left all behind and brought together a group of associates who joined with him in caring for the poor and the sick. After he became a priest, he worked even more earnestly for the salvation of souls by founding homes, exercising apostolic zeal, and afflicting himself with harsh penances. He died at Rome in October 18, 1775. O Lord, open my lips, and let us declare your praise. Come, let us praise the Lord, in him is all our delight. Sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Let us approach him with praise and thanksgiving and sing joyful songs to the Lord. Come, let us praise the Lord. In him is all our delight. The Lord is God, the mighty God, the great King over all the gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the highest mountains as well. He made the sea, it belongs to him. The dry land too, for it was formed by his hands. Come, let us praise the Lord. In him is all our delight. Come then, let us bow down and worship, bending the knee before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are his people, the flock he shepherds. Come, let us praise the Lord. In him is all our delight. Today listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not grow stubborn as your fathers did in the wilderness. When at Merib and Massa they challenged me and provoked me, although they had seen all of my works. Come, let us praise the Lord. In him is all our delight. Forty years I endured that generation. I said, they are people whose hearts go astray, and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my anger, they shall not enter into my rest. Come, let us praise the Lord, in him is all our delight. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us praise the Lord, in him is all our delight. This is the feast day of the Lord's true witness, who on this day received the glory to him. Let all creation celebrate his good. Oh, 
My God, do not reject my cry for help, assailed as I am by the wicked. O oh God, listen to my prayer. Do not hide from my pleading, but turn to me and reply. With my cares I cannot rest. I tremble at the shouts of the foe, at the cries of the wicked. For they bring down evil upon me, they assail me with fury. My heart is stricken within me, death's terror is on me. Trembling and fear fall upon me, and horror overwhelms me. Oh, that I had wings like a dove, to fly away and be at rest. So I will escape far away, and take refuge in the desert. I would hasten to find the shelter from the raging wind, from the destructive storm, O oh Lord, and from their plotting tongues. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord himself will free us from hostile and treacherous hands, for I can see nothing but violence, and the strife in the city. Night and day they patrol, high on the city walls. It is full of wickedness and evil. It is full of sin. Its streets are never free from tyranny and deceit. If this had been done by an enemy, I could bear this off. If a rival had risen against me, I could hide from him. But it is you, my own companion, my intimate friend. How close was the friendship between us? We walked together in harmony in the house of God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Entrust your cares to the Lord, he will sustain you. As for me, I will cry to, cry to God, and the Lord will save me. Evening, morning, and at noon, I will cry and lament. He will deliver my soul in peace in the attack against me. For those who fight me are many, but he hears my voice. God will hear and will humble them, the eternal judge. For they will not amend their ways, they have no fear of God. The traitor has turned against his friends. He has broken his word. His speech is softer than butter, but war is in his heart. His words are smoother than oil, but they are naked swords. Then trust your cares to the Lord, and he will support you. He will never allow the just man to stumble. But you, O oh God, will bring them down to the pit of death. The deceitful and bloodthirsty men shall not live half their days. O oh Lord, I will trust in you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. <coughs> Amen. Children, listen to my words of wisdom. Pay attention to my counsels.
from the beginning of the book of the prophet Malachi, an oracle, the word of the Lord to Israel through Malachi. I have loved you, says the Lord, but you say, how have you loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, says the Lord? Did I love Jacob, but hated Esau? I made his mountains a waste, his heritage a desert for jackals. Ephedim says, we have been crushed, but we will rebuild the ruins. Thus says the Lord of hosts, they indeed may build, but I will tear down, and they shall be called the land of guilt, the people with whom the Lord is angry forever. Your own eyes shall see it, and you will say, Great is the Lord, even beyond the land of Israel. A son honors his father, and a servant fears his master. If I then am your father, where is the honor due to me? And if I am a master, where is the reverence due to me? So says the Lord of hosts to you, O priests, who despise his name. But you ask, how have we despised your name? by offering polluted food on my altar. And you ask, how have we polluted it? By saying the table of the Lord may be slighted. When you offer a blind animal for sacrifice, is this not evil? When you offer the lame or the sick, is it not evil? Present it to your governor, see if he will accept it, or welcome you, says the Lord of hosts. So now if you implore God for mercy on us, when you have done the like, will he welcome any of you, says the Lord of hosts. Oh, that one among you would shut the temple gates to keep you from kindling fire on my altar in vain. I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, neither will I accept any sacrifice from your hands. From the rising of the sun, even to its setting, my name is great among the nations, and everywhere they bring sacrifice to my name and a pure offering. For great is my name among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. But you have probably profaned, but you behave profanely toward me by thinking the Lord's table and its offering may be polluted, for its food slighted. You also say, what a burden, and you scorn it, says the Lord of hosts. You bring in what you seize, or the lame, or the sick, yes, you bring it in as a sacrifice. Shall I accept it from your hands, says the Lord? Cursed is the deceiver who has in his flock a male, but under his vow sacrifices to the Lord a gilding. For a great king am I, says the Lord of hosts, and my name will be feared among the nations. This also you do, the altar of the Lord you cover with tears, weeping and groaning because he no longer regards your sacrifice nor accepts it favorably from your hand. You say, why is it? Because the Lord is witness between you and the wife of your youth, with whom you have broken faith, though she is your companion, your betrothed wife. Did he not make one being with flesh and spirit? And what does that one require but godly offering? You must then safeguard life that is your own, and not break faith with the wife of your youth, for I hate divorce, says the Lord, the God of Israel. And covering one's garment with injustice, says the Lord of hosts, you must then safeguard life that is your own and not break faith. I made a covenant with Levi the priest. In it I promised him life and peace. I filled him with fear and he revered me. His teaching was true and no dishonesty fell from his lips. The Lord has sworn an oath which he will not regret. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. His teaching was true <coughs> and no dishonesty fell from his lips. From a letter by St. Paul of the Cross, it is very good and holy to consider the passion of our Lord and to meditate on it, for by this sacred path 
we reach union with God. In this most holy school we learn true wisdom, for it was there that the saints learned it. Indeed, when the cross of our dear Jesus has planted its roots more deeply in your hearts, then you will rejoice to suffer and not to die, or either to suffer and not to die, or better, neither to suffer nor to die, but only to turn perfectly to the will of God. Love is a unifying virtue which takes upon itself the torments of its beloved Lord. It is a fire reaching through the, the inmost soul. It transforms the lover into the one love. More deeply, love intermingles with grief and grief with love. And a certain blending of love and grief occurs and they become... Live in such a way that all may know that you bear outwardly as well as inwardly the image of Christ crucified, the model of all gentleness and mercy. For if a man is united inwardly with the Son of the living God, he also bears his life with likeness outwardly by his continual practice of heroic goodness, especially through patience reinforced by courage, which does not complain, either secretly or in public. Conceal yourselves in Jesus crucified and hope for nothing except all men be thoroughly converted to his will. When you become true lovers of the crucified, you will always celebrate the feast of the cross in the inner temple of your soul, bearing, it in, bearing all in silence and not relying on any creature. Since festivals ought to be celebrated joyfully, those who love the crucified should honor the feast of the cross by enduring in silence with serene and joyful countenance, so that their suffering remains hidden from men and is observed by God alone. For in this feast there is always a solemn banquet, and the food presented is the will of God, exemplified by the love of our crucified Christ. God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through it the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exalt in God my Savior. Through it the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. Create a clean heart in me, O God, renew in me a steadfast spirit. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion, blot out my offense. O wash me more and more from my guilt, and cleanse me from my sin. My offenses truly I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you alone have I sinned. What is evil in your sight I have done? That you may be justified when you give sentence, and be without reproach when you judge. O oh, see in guilt I was born, a sinner was I conceived. I indeed you love truth in the heart, then in the secret of my heart teach me wisdom. O oh, purify me, then I shall be clean. O oh, wash me, I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear rejoicing and gladness, that the bones you have crushed may revive. From my sins turn away your face, and blot out all my guilt. O oh, pure heart, create for me, O oh God, put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. Leave me again the joy of your help, with a spirit of fervor sustain me, that I may teach transgressors your ways, and sinners may return to you. O rescue me, God my helper, and my 
my tongue shall bring out your goodness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. For in sacrifice you take no delight, burnt offering from me you would refuse. My sacrifice a contrite spirit, a humbled contrite heart you will not spurn. In your goodness shall favor to Zion, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with lawful sacrifice, all across offered on your altar. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Rejoice, Jerusalem, for through you all men will be gathered to the Lord. Let all men speak of the Lord's majesty and sing his praises in Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, holy city, he scourged you for the works of your hands, but will again pity the children of the righteous. Praise the Lord for his goodness and bless the King of the ages, so that his tents may be rebuilt in you with joy. May he gladden with the new all who were captives, all who were ravaged may he cherish within you for all generations to come. A bright light will shine to all parts of the earth. Many nations shall come to you from afar, and the inhabitants of all the limits of the earth drawn to you by the name of the Lord God, bearing in their hands their gifts for the King of heaven. Every generation shall give joyful praise in you and shall call you the chosen one through all ages forever. O oh, then rejoice over the children of the righteous. All shall all be gathered together, and shall bless the Lord of the ages. Happy are those who love you, and happy those who rejoice in your prosperity. Happy are all the men who shall wait for you over all your chastisements. For they shall rejoice in you as they behold all your joy forever. My spirit blesses the Lord, the great King. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Zion, praise your God, who sent his word to renew the earth. Oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Zion, praise your God. He has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed the children within you. He has established peace on your borders. He feeds you with finest wheat. He sends out his word to the earth and swiftly runs his command. He showers down snow white as wool. He scatters hoar frost like ashes. He rolls down hailstones like rocks. The waters are frozen at his touch. He sends forth his word and it melts them. At the breath of his mouth the waters flow. He makes his word known to Jacob. To Israel, his laws and decrees. He has not dealt thus with other nations. He has not taught them his decrees. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
reading from Galatians. I have been crucified with Christ, and the life I live now is not my own. Christ is living in me. I still live my human life, but it is a life of faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The Lord the Most High has done good things for me. In need I shall cry out to him. The Lord the Most High has done good things for me. In need I shall cry out to him. May he send his strength to rescue me. In need I shall cry out to him. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord the Most High has done good things for me. In need I shall cry out to him. Through the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of all that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our lives. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We trust in God's concern for every person he has created and redeemed through his Son. Let us therefore renew our prayer to him. Fulfill the good work you have begun in us, Lord. Fulfill the good work you have begun in us, Lord. O God of mercy, guide us toward spiritual growth. Fill our minds with thoughts of truth, justice, and love. Fulfill the good work you have begun in us, Lord. For your name's sake, do not abandon us forever, and do not annul your covenant. Fulfill the good work you have begun in us, Lord. Accept us, for our hearts are humble and our spirits contrite, and those who trust in you shall not be put to shame. Fulfill the good work you have begun in us, Lord. You have called us to a prophetic vocation in Christ. Help us to proclaim your mighty deeds. Fulfill the good work you have begun in us, Lord. For all of our benefactors living and deceased, for people For all the men particip participating in the Come and See Weekend. For Father Gregory Lou and his preaching. For the whole Passion Disorder. For the President Let us pray our confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, 
of Christ. May his example inspire us to embrace our own cross with courage. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.
Well, good morning and welcome to St. Dominic's Catholic Church here in San Francisco as we come together to begin this novena to St. Jude Thaddeus. Hopefully you all in person picked up one of these mass programs, these novena programs. Those of you watching the live stream have a PDF download link in the description box directly below the video 
of the same mass program. This morning's celebrant is Father Anthony Rosevere, and Father Gregory Liu will be our preacher for this novena all next week. I now invite you to stand and sing with me our opening hymn, For the Beauty of the Earth. blessing that we have the opportunity to gather together and to begin this novena. I welcome you to the novena and those who are online for our Mass that welcome us through these nine days of prayer leading up to the Feast of St. Jude. So we enter into this novena a few announcements to begin our celebration. There are blank petition slips that are over on the altar for St. Jude that will be gathered together and placed on this altar and we particularly remember those in all of the Masses that we celebrate here. And for even those who are online, you can even go on the QR code in uh, the website for our uh, St. Jude Shrine and find those petition slips and fill them out and turn them in to, the, to be placed on our altar. These masses, these morning masses, will be live streamed and some of the ma Sunday masses as well, so people can join us from a distance. And I give you great thanks for your devotion to St. Jude very important devotion. We open our hearts to the guidance of the apostles, and he's one of the great ones of the preachers of Jesus' gospel, so that we're drawn closer to the heart of the Lord. We understand him, we know him, we allow him to enter into our lives. And we are very grateful to you because all of your donations, the candles that are purchased here, all of those things really help with the formation of our brothers at St. Albert's Priory and here in the division. So you really further the work of the order, the preaching of the order, you participate in that ministry, reaching out to many, many souls with the message of Christ. Also, the relic will be blessing people individually at the end of Mass and after the preaching with the relic uh, of St. Jude at each of our Masses. So we enter into this novena, into this special Mass this day, in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us acknowledge our sins, to clear away the obstacles to God's grace at work in our lives, open our life to his mercy and his peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray.
May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what can we say that Abraham found, our ancestor according to the flesh? Indeed, if Abraham was justified on the basis of his works, he has reason to boast, but this was not so in the sight of God. For what does scripture say? Abraham believed in God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. A worker's wage is credited not as a gift, but as something due. But when one does not work, yet believes in the one who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited as righteousness. So also David declares the blessedness of the person to whom God credits the righteousness apart from works. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not record. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I turn to you. salvation. I turn to you, O Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I turn to you, O Lord, in time of salvation. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. I turn to you, O Lord, in time of a trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just. Exalt all you upright of a heart. I turn to you, O Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Oh, 
have put our hope in you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. At that time, so many people were crowded together that they were trampling one another underfoot. Jesus began to speak first to his disciples. Beware of the leaven, that is, the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. There is nothing concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the darkness will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered behind closed doors will be proclaimed on the housetops. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but after that can do no more. I shall show you whom to fear. Be afraid of the one who, after killing, has the power to cast into Gehenna. Yes, I tell you, be afraid of that one. Are not five sparrows sold for two small coins? Yet none of them has escaped the notice of God. Even the hairs of your head have all been counted. Do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome Father Gregory Liu, who is a vicar in the parish at, our, at St. Dominic's in Benicia for the preaching all the way through this novena. But as is our custom, the preaching for this morning Mass will take place at the end of Mass, so that people have to get on to their daily routine or their work are able to leave at that time. So please stand and let us gather our prayers and present them to our loving God. For our preachers and teachers, especially for Father Gregory Liu during this novena, that they may proclaim from the housetops the good news of the Gospel with courage and joy, we pray to the Lord that the Lord may raise up in the world leaders after his own heart who will rebuild a culture of life and a society based on justice for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may have the confidence of those who know they are of great value to God and that he may give us strength to have no fear of persecution for his namesake. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are laboring under a burden of guilt, that they may come back to God's grace and love through the sacrament of reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. That our brothers and sisters who have died may be among those whose iniquities are forgiven, whose sins are covered, that by God's mercy they may know eternal rest, we pray to the Lord. Especially pursuing the intercession of St. Jude, who is an intercessor for those in desperate need, in desperate cases. In our world, we're in a desperate case, on the verge of war in our world, and this violence that's taking place in various parts of our world. So that is a special petition throughout this whole novena, that the Lord, the Holy Spirit, would lead us in the ways of peace. For this we pray to you, Lord. Lord and at this Mass, we particularly remember the Corsica family, and all the deceased Dominicans, family, friends, benefactors, and those resting here in our columbarium, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the petitions that are sent in to St. Jude during this novena, and in a moment of silence, all of your own individual intentions. Heavenly Father, we entrust to you all of our needs, asking that you hear and answer us in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, and all the holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Abaot, Plenis und celiet terra gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus qui venit in nomine domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, Lord, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Agnus Dei, quit all his peccata mundi, Miserere nobis, Agnus Dei, quit all his peccata mundi, Miserere nobis, Agnus Dei, quit all his peccata mundi, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In salutari tu anima mea, et in verbum tuum speravi, quando faci Este persequentibus me judici. In iqui persecuti sunt me, adiova me domine. Adorate te devote, latens 
Dios de Idas, que sobis figuris vere latitas, tibis hecor meum totum subligit, quia te contemplans totum deficit. Visus tactus custus in te falitur, sed auditus solo tuto creditur. Credo quid, quid dixit Dei filius, nil hoc verbo veritatis verius. In cruce lat hepat sola deitas, Ad hic latet simul et humanitas. Amo tamen credens atque confitens, pet hoc quod petivit latro Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May the peace and blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. So now, for those of you who are able to remain, we will have our preaching. For those of you who have to go to your daily tasks, may the Lord bless you and keep you throughout this day. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Please be seated. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Uh, my name is Father Gregory Liu, and I am the parochial vicar of our sister parish, St. Dominic's in Venetia. So I'm not far at all. So I'm very, very glad and grateful to be invited to be the preacher of this year's St. Jude Novena. And so um, I want to reassure you that throughout this Novena, we're all praying for all of your intentions, uh, intentions of all the devotees of St. Jude. And so um, we have already received quite a number of intentions or petitions in the basket, but I want to remind you that we still have uh, blank petition slips at the shrine's altar. <clears throat> and you can also submit your intentions online by scanning the QR code. So yes, we are indeed very high tech. Um, and also, uh, as Father Anthony might have mentioned, every morning we live stream the morning uh, Novena Mass. And also, before I begin, I want to thank you. As you know, for our longtime parishioners and longtime devotees, the proceed of your generosity during this uh, Novena goes to support the formation of Dominican Student Brothers. And I, myself, am one of your beneficiaries. The reason why I am able to stand here and to share with you the wisdom of God is because of your generosity. Without your generosity, I wouldn't have been able to be here. So thank you very much, and I'm grateful for your ongoing generous support to uh, the Western Dominican province and all our ministries and our formation. As you know, this year we have nine student brothers, uh, nine novice brothers, and many other student brothers. So it's a great problem to have. And so I want to thank you first of all. And so, um, without further ado, let's pray St. Jude prayer and ask for his intercession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Jude, glorious apostle, faithful servant, and friend of Jesus, the name of the traitor has caused you to be forgotten by many, but the Church honors and invokes you universally as the patron of difficult and despaired cases. Pray for me who am in need of God's mercy. Make use, I implore you, that particular privilege accorded to you to bring visible and speedy help where help was almost despaired of. Come to my assistance in this great need that I may receive the consolation and help of heaven in all my necessities, tribulations, sufferings particularly, and that I may praise God with you and all the elect throughout all eternity. I promise you, O blessed St. Jude, be, to be ever mindful of this great favor. I will honor you as my special and powerful patron and encourage devotion to you. St. Jude, pray for us and for all who honor and invoke thy aid. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So in today's first reading, taken from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, Chapter 4, St. Paul lays down the centrality of faith in Christianity. He really emphasizes that it's our faith in God, in Jesus Christ, our Lord, who died on the cross and rose again for us, and not the observance of the law of Moses that make us just and righteous in the sight of God. And he up upholds Abraham our Father in faith, as a prime example. And this is what today's reading is all about. Abraham lived in a time where there was not yet the law of Moses. And yet, the book of Genesis clearly says, Abraham believed in God and it was credited to him as righteousness. This is referring how Abraham believed in God hoping against hope 
that God was going to give him a son, even though his wife Sarah had way past beyond the age of childbearing. And yet, Abraham believed in God. Abraham believed in all the promises that God made to him. And so, St. Paul emphasizes that this is a gift. This gift of faith and the gift of justification that comes from the faith is truly a gift. It's completely gratuitous on the part of God and not something we earned or something we merit because of our righteousness. No, it is a gift from God. And I think this indeed fills us with hope. And this is the theme that I want to really hone in during this St. Jude Novena, because I know many of our devotees are really in a very difficult situation. And, you know, as we emerge from this global pandemic a few years ago, and with all the wars going on in the world, we really need to hold on to this hope in God, don't we? And that's exactly what I want to really focus on during this novena. And so, yes, what St. Paul just tells us, fills us with hope. Because through our baptism, the sacrament of faith, we have all been gift, gifted with the gift of faith. And we have all been washed clean by Jesus Christ. This is because at baptism, we are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. His blood that was shed on the cross washed was as clean. And moreover, we are raised to him, with him, to new life at our baptism. And as a result, we are seen as just and righteous in the sight of God. And therefore, we are given the hope of eternal life. But that is not all, because with the baptism, like Jesus Christ, we are also given the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells in us, and through the sacraments of confirmation, Eucharist, and reconciliation, we are being transformed little by little into the image of our Lord Jesus Christ, which St. Saint, Saint Jude the Apostle bore in the medallion, as you can see in many of his uh, portraits and uh, statues. And God is so gracious because for those who believed in God but never got a chance to be baptized, we believe as Catholics, we believe firmly that God has ways to save them apart from the sacrament of baptism. The Catechism of the Catholic Church tells us in the case of martyrs, the church has always held the firm conviction that those who suffer death for the sake of the faith without having received baptism are baptized by their death for and with Christ. This baptism of blood, like the desire for baptism, brings about the fruits of baptism without being a sacrament. And in fact, in the history of the church, we have many catechumens who were martyrs. They were martyred even before they had a chance to be baptized, and yet they are the saints in heaven nevertheless. Also for catechumens who unfortunately die of illness before they have a chance to be baptized, again, the church holds that their explicit desire to receive the baptism together with repentance for their sins and charity assures them the salvation that they were not able to receive through the sacraments. And also for those who love God but never heard of the gospel, still, this is again quoting from the Catechism, since Christ died for all, and since all men are in fact called to one and the same destiny, which is divine, we must hold that the Holy Spirit offers to all the possibility of being made partakers in ways known to God of the Paschal mystery. Every man who is ignorant of the gospel of Christ and of his church, but seeks the truth and does the will of God in accordance with his understanding of it, 
can be saved. It may be supposed that such persons would have desired baptism explicitly if they had known its necessity. So all these truly fill us with hope. And indeed, faith brings us hope. And today, Saint, Saint Paul of the Cross has this beautiful thing to say. He says, fancy a mother who playfully holds in her arms a child over a ledge or a high wall like this, or over the brink of a precipice. Who could believe that this mother would let her child fall? Neither can I persuade myself that God will let me fall into the depths of hell if I rely on him. Therefore, I repose with perfect security that on the base, on the bosom of the divine goodness, much more peacefully than does a child in the arms of its mother. And therefore, place your hopes in the mercy of God and the merits of our Redeemer. Say often, look at the crucifix. They are the center of my hope. And indeed, this is the center, uh, uh, the, the central part of the spirituality of St. Paul of the Cross. He really teaches us that on the cross, on the suffering Christ, Jesus himself reveals to us the depth of his love. So he goes on to say, I am full of miseries, however, I hope to save my soul. I hope it in, of the infinite power and the goodness of God. I hope it through the passion and death of Jesus. I hope by the intercession of the mother of sorrows. Yes, I hope to go to heaven. And he goes on to say, your eternal salvation depend if your eternal salvation depend dependent on yourself alone, you would have serious cause for alarm. But since it is at hand of your heavenly Father, what have you to fear? My hope rests in the passion of Jesus and on the dolors of Mary. And similarly, in today's gospel, Jesus reassures us, saying, Are not five sparrows sold for two small coins? Yet two of them has escaped, that none of them has escaped the notice of God. Even the hairs of your head have all been counted. Do not be afraid, you are worth more than many sparrows. And this hope, rooted firmly in the faith, liberates us from fear. And this is indeed the gospel. For this reason, St. Paul of the Cross encourages us to always seek God in the interior of our soul. And yes, we can and we should seek God always, try to be close to him, and we should do it courageously because we do not have to be afraid of those who kill the body and after that can do nothing more. And so this includes oppression, persecution, illnesses, poverty, setbacks, disappointment, losses, and all kinds of sufferings and difficulties. And I mention this again, especially because a lot of the devotees of St. Jude are truly in a difficult situation. And St. Paul of the Cross, again, has many beautiful sayings that bring us encouragement in the midst of suffering. For example, he said, meditation on Jesus Christ crucified is a precious balm which sweetens all our pains. And wonder what an honor God confers on us when he calls us to travel the same road as his divine son. Be thankful for your precious trials, both interior and exterior. It is thus that the garden of Jesus is adorned with flowers, that is, with the acts of virtues. And the more deeply the cross penetrates, the better. The more deprived of consolation that your suffering is, the purer it will be. The more creatures oppose us, the more closely shall we be united to God. And sickness 
is the great grace of God. He teaches us what we are. In it, we recognize the patient, humble, and mortified man. When sickness weakens and mortifies the body, the soul is better disposed to raise herself up to God. So may through the intercession of St. Jude and St. Paul of the Cross and all the saints, that during our lifetime, our faith may be purified like gold in a furnace. And this way, living in faith, we have the hope that when Jesus Christ prophesied, as he prophesied today, that when all things make manifest, we will be shown as radiant and more precious than the purest gold. And now, um, Brother Humble is going to lead us in the prayer in the recitation of the rosary. Good morning. I'm Brother Humbert. I'm one of the novices here. And I'm going to lead you in the Sorrowful Mysteries of the Rosary. I'm going to follow the Dominican tradition, which has a shorter opening. <clears throat> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. O God, come to my assistance. O Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The first sorrowful mystery, the agony in the garden. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. 
The second sorrowful mystery is the scourging at the pillar. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. What's our sins? Save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The third sorrowful mystery is the crowning with thorns. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, 
and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The fourth sorrowful mystery is the carrying of the cross. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The fifth sorrowful mystery is the crucifixion. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus.
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile. Show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Queen of the Most Holy Rosary. O God, begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life. Grant, we beseech thee, that by meditating upon these sacred mysteries of the Most Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you. We'll conclude now with the blessing with the St. Jude relic. And I also want to remind you that the sacrament of confession will be available before the morning and the evening masses all during the novena.